This video is rebuilding a Honda BAXA transmission. To start, I got this shift kit from Superior Transmission. It's supposed to help with smoother shifts and prevent overheating. The first thing from the kit was making some holes in the separator plates bigger. It came with the right size drill bits. Then there was this aluminum plug to tap into a certain hole. Now, this isn't part of the kit, I had to use this tool called a bench buddy. It's basically some fine sandpaper, but on a brush that you put in a drill. You polish all the bores with these, blow out the debris, and use a little WD-40 as lube to check the valves. If the valve falls in under its own weight, it's polished enough. If not, polish more. This one got stuck, but this one here is what they should all look like. Next, I clean the valve bodies again, and they're ready for reassembly. On the regulator body, the shift kit came with a new regulator valve, so I lubed that up and put it in, along with all the springs, and compressed the cap while I put in the stop bolt. I put in the other valves and end plugs, and a little filter screen, and the regulator body was done. Next, the accumulator body. The shift kit had new springs for the second accumulator. Both get new O-rings and held in with the snap ring. I had to use the handle of my ratchet and put my body weight into it to get these springs compressed. Then there's a check valve and two check balls. Done. On to the servo body. The third and fourth accumulators get new O-rings, some assembly lube, and into a Ziploc for later. The shift kit came with new clutch pressure control valves A and B, and a couple of end plugs with O-rings. So put those in. Then the shift valves A and B. Then the shift fork shaft got a new O-ring off camera. Now the main valve body. This part's just a bit trickier. I have all the valves and their end plugs lined up here, but any valve that is butted up against end plug without a spring in between, we need to improve the end plug seal. There's four of them in the main valve body. There are also two on the servo body, but those are solved with the O-ring end plugs from the shift kit. You can buy O-ring end plugs for these four, but there's a cheaper way using a pipe cutter. Here's a quick explanation. This is a diagram. That's the end plug. This is the clip that holds it in, and it goes in this groove right here. You want to use your pipe cutter to cut a small groove right across this section, about here on the plug. This is the kind of pipe cutter you need. Put the plug in it like this. Tighten it down, but don't crank it down. You just want to make a small groove. Then, use some pliers to turn the plug until the groove is all the way around it. This is about what the groove will look like. It doesn't look like much, but it makes a tiny lip on there so the plug makes a better seal with the valve body. If you put it in and it's really loose, you want to make the groove deeper. It should be kind of hard to push into the bore. You may need to tap it with a hammer. Make sure you have the valve in right, because it'll be hard to get the plug back out. Put the clip in, and make sure the plug is backed out against the clip. Now put the other valves in. I also check the pump gears clearances using a feeler gauge. Not the best way to do it, but I don't have money for a good depth micrometer. It worked okay. And that's it for the main valve body. Now the clutches. New O-rings on the pistons. In what universe? Then compress the spring with the same tool and put on the snap rings.
I sanded the end plates with fine grit emery cloth to rough them up a bit. Then in go the steels and frictions that have been soaking in ATF, followed by the end plates and snap rings. New oil seals go in. Now it's time to put everything together. There's the main separator plate and three dowel pins. Then the pump gears. Then there's this check valve which got a new spring from the shift kit. In goes the main valve body. Then a check ball, which also gets a new spring. Four bolts, which get torqued down. Check that the pump gear is still turning freely. In goes the manual valve. There's also a little screen that goes here, and four dowel pins that go here, 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 and here. In goes the servo separator plate. Then the control shaft and the detent arm with its spring. The shift fork shaft goes in, and then the servo body gets bolted down. In go the third and fourth accumulators, their springs, and the cover. In goes the filter, then the servo detent base. Next, the regulator separator plate, the stator shaft and stop, and the regulator body gets torqued out. Now, the accumulator body. Now, six feed pipes. In with the differential. Then the countershaft with first gear. Then third gear. A couple cotters, their collar, and a snap ring. I forgot to film putting the main shaft and secondary shaft together, but they're pretty easy if you have a diagram. So, in with the main shaft and secondary shaft. Onto the counter shaft goes fourth gear and a needle bearing, reverse selector hub, reverse selector, and a shift fork, which goes on the servo valve with a bolt and lock washer. Next is another needle bearing, the reverse gear, and second gear. Now three dowel pins and on goes the main housing. And you gotta balance the reverse idler gear in here. Then I put in all the bolts and torqued them down, but I guess I looked at my camera wrong because it randomly stopped recording right here. And again, as I was putting some solenoids on. Oh well. In goes the reverse idler shaft and its holder. Whack the part gear in. Then the parking pole. Thrust needle bearing, needle bearing, counter shaft idler gear, another thrust bearing, bearing hub assembly, spring washer, and tighten the lock nut. Then the secondary shaft idler gear, spring washer, and lock nut. 
main shaft idler gear, spring washer, and lock nut. Torque all those down, then stake the lock nuts. Now I tightened the bolt on the park lever and bent the lock washer because I forgot to earlier. Park pawl stop, two doubt pins, then the paper gasket. Then the right side cover, which has some new O-rings and an oil seal. Bunch of bolts torqued down. Cooler tubes. Solenoids, sensors. And an oil seal. Holy hell, it's all together.